The ATF's arm brace rule has been released. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms for NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. Now, this was looming. It was going to happen sooner or later, and it did happen. So now the ATF yesterday, and I'm doing this video uh, first thing this morning, has released their arm brace rule and in this final final composition and what's interesting is they released it on the 13th on friday right before a holiday now there's another person is a lawyer a second amendment lawyer i wish i could remember because i saw his video back when they delayed it and he predicted that today or friday would have been the release date he he nailed it to a t if i remember who it is i'll put his video in the description box but the guy nailed it down but, of course, there is the usual nonsense and BS talking points. And they released, when they released the arm brace rule, they had to throw in their little gaslighting. But this was, I believe, from Merrick Garland. He states, keeping our community safe from gun violence is among the department's highest priorities. He said in a statement, almost a century ago, Congress determined that short barreled rifles must be subject to heightened requirements Today's rule makes clear that firearm manufacturers, dealers, and individuals cannot evade these important public safety productions simply by adding accessories to pistols that transfer them into short barrel rifles. Now, I have, you know, you know, if you've been watching me, you know, I talk, I've consistently talked about this over and over and over and over and over again. This arm brace rule, I've talked about it a lot. And I have also argued that we need to be careful coming from the perspective of Connecticut because we have the other platform. And I've gone back and forth with people on this. Friendly, friendly, don't get me wrong, no, no, no slug matches. But I keep telling people with others, you are going to be subject to this thing. And they are going to say, no, we're not. Here is the final rule. Pay attention, please. Okay. Now to point out the form 4999, they removed all the the point requirements on this section from that form. That no longer exists, but they did add this language from the original draft to the final. This language has been added. Once again, please pay attention to this. This is important. Okay, I'm gonna bring that up. Okay. Accordingly, the department amends the definition of rifle under 27 CFR 478.11 and 479.11 to expressly state that the term designed or redesigned, made or remade, and intended to be fired from the shoulder includes a weapon that is equipped with an accessory component or other rearward attachment, e.g. a stabilizing brace. This is their wording. I, I, it couldn't be any clearer than that. But I go on that provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder. It provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder, which is kind of very aloof language because technically a buffer tube has surface area, but okay. Provided other factors as listed in the amendment regulations and described in this preamble indicate that the weapon is designed, made and intended to be fired from the shoulder. The other factors are, and if we go through these, one, whether the weapon has a weight or length consistent with the weight or length of similarly designed rifles. Two, whether the weapon has a length of pull measured from the center of the trigger to the center of the shoulder stock or other rearward accessory component or attachment, including an adjustable or telescoping attachment with the ability to lock into various positions along a buffer tube, receiver extension, or other attachment method that is consistent with other, well, with similarly designed rifles. Three, whether the weapon is equipped with sights or a scope with eye relief that require the weapon to be fired from the shoulder in order to be used as designed. Four, whether the surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder is created by a buffer tube, receiver extension, or other accessory component, or other rearward attachment as necessary for the cycle of operation. Okay. Five, the manufacturer's direct or indirect marketing of promotional materials, including the intended use of the weapon. And six, information demonstrating the likely use of the weapon in the general community. 
Okay, there it is. And number four, notice, I'm gonna repeat this, because I did mention it earlier, whether the surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder is created by a buffer tube. So, there it is again. If you have a buffer tube, they can make, consider that surface area to allow you fire from the shoulder. Even though I can't think it would be stupid, stupid enough, imagine a 308 trying to put a buffer tube in your shoulder. But this is them banning weapons. I'm gonna come over to jump out of that. And now I'm gonna leave a lot of information, uh, two articles, plus I'm gonna leave the PDF. It's 293 pages. I have not read all of it yet. I've read, I've gotten up to about 20 pages, but it's in there, you can read it. One good, good plus is, is that there is already a, there's a lawsuit already in play into this item. Second Amendment Foundation, has filed suit against the ATF. And with the knowledge that judges have already stepped in when it comes to the 80% 80, 80 low receivers, and I believe in the bump stocks, we've gotten positive rulings on both of those cases where the clear language is the ATF and the DOJ cannot make law. They have to go through Congress. There has to be a law established because remember when these arm braces came out, they were sold in good faith. Everybody said, the ATF said, yeah, they're legal. Now the ATF is saying, no, they're not. So I'm expecting, and then once again, I'm not, no legal opinion. I'm expecting a judge to jump right in and go, nope, injunction. We're going to hold this up until it goes through the courts. So let's hope that happens soon, but there is a lawsuit in effect right now. So obviously that's going to immediately be taken to trial and judge is gonna to have to make an initial ruling. They'll probably go for an injunction first and then bring it forward through the courts. Oh boy. So once again, just be careful, but keep an eye on what's going on. Inform yourself, okay? Because it's not how we interpret it. We may, if we could be 100% right, it's how the law enforcement and legal authorities interpret it and how they enforce it. That's what it's about. But. Let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time the video goes live. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.